Hey out there, you fellers. I'm here again for a vinyl update. Can you see my incense burning back there in front of my Hanson picture? That's some good smelling incense, I tell you what. You know, I need to lean over here like this because I got my computer on there behind me and sometimes a few questionable pictures might come up, so I don't want to shock anybody or anything so i gotta remember to sit over here like this i didn't realize that until i pressed record Alrighty then well the first thing i want to show here is uh when we went record shopping recently which we said we wasn't going to do i showed a uh, one of my vinyl pickups in my last vinyl update so if you want to see that click on through to the previous video but i picked up some cds god my legs are killing me i'm old Ugh, sitting in the floor just doesn't work but you know trying to give you a change of scenery here a little bit of a different backdrop anyway i uh bought more cds than i did vinyl which that doesn't happen much at a record store but you know, in this case, I was just in the mood for CDs, and the CDs they had, some of those weren't on vinyl, so, uh, you know, I'm allowed to do that anyway. It's not like, I mean, it's still, you know, I'm still at a record store. I'm still supporting the record store. Uh, it was everybody's records, by the way, which you've heard me and Kat talk about them all the time. Uh some great guys working there uh you have jason pate anybody know him he's the metal guy there and you have woody extremely nice guy always uh finding uh some good records for us uh some free records uh you got harry that works there he's been there since i think the 80s uh extremely nice um some of the other guys, I don't know their names, but everyone there is always helpful and so on and so forth. But you probably get tired of hearing me go on about them. But, uh, you know, there's other record stores around here in this, you know, not in this area exactly in my backyard where I live. But, you know, record shopping is worth driving distance to, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but there's other record stores that we go to, and I I like all record stores. But um, I think everyone out there, if they're used to uh, certain record stores or they have their favorites, you know. So that's just basically it. Anyway, uh, some of the CDs I picked up, I'm just babbling on. Uh, I got this Mayhem Live in... Z-E-I-T-Z, -E -Z, Zitz, Zitz, I think it's called. It's on Peaceville Records. Uh, was on a black metal kick for about two weeks, which I do that from time to time. And uh, Mayhem especially. I just watched that uh, Lords of Chaos movie, which was pretty much about Mayhem to a certain degree. Uh, all the church burnings and uh, stuff in the 90s that went on. A lot of people, well, I can't say a lot of people, but some of the reviews that I've watched on YouTube, they don't like the movie. They think that they've left out certain parts or they've glamorized it or, you know, made Hollywood version of it, which it is to a certain extent, but you, all, you, you sort of have to do that with a movie to keep people's interest, I think. But I think they did a great job. I really enjoyed the movie, and I'd like to see it again, and I can't wait until it comes out, hopefully on Blu-ray or something. Uh, then I also picked this up, Immortal Pure Holocaust, and this has the original logo, which I I wasn't aware that they had released or re-released things on with the original logo. I don't know how new this is, but I mean I know it's their I think it's their first album. Let me see if it's got a date here on the back. Uh, Osmosis or Osmos Productions. Which I think is a fairly new distributor. Doesn't have a date on it, but 
yeah, Immortal. I mean, how can you go wrong with them? And then this one I picked up just out of curiosity. It was the artwork on it was great, and I thought, well, oh, I'll, I'll get on YouTube here real quick and listen to a little bit of it, see if I like it, and I liked it. So it's called. Let me see if I can pronounce this right. Funerary box, temporary interment. I think is what it's pronounced. But anyway, it's some cool artwork. And it's black and white. I always am a sucker for that. I mean, look at my shirt. Um, but it's really good. I, it has like a million tracks on it, give or take. Let's see, it has 29 tracks on it. And I would, I would really uh, recommend this record. I mean, of course, I'd recommend Immortal and um, Mayhem. But I would rec recommend Funerary Box. That's a hard thing to say, but let me name some of the, read some of the titles here. Uh, Before the Cadaver, Cadaver Grows Cold, uh, Spectral Fornication Atop Altars of Frozen Meat. That's nice. Uh, Satanic Rock and Roll Terrorism. Occult Situation. I'm just skipping around here. Um, into the Temple of Perpetual Sodom, Sodomy. <clears throat> that one got me all choked up. Uh, the Sword of Ordeer. Or, or, dear, or, dear, or, dear, or, uh, and Undercover of the Night's the last track, which is a Rolling Stones song. It's great. Uh, and then this one was awesome to find. Uh, the Bomboras Head Shrinking Fun. I've seen this record. Well, it's a CD, isn't it? I've seen this when it came out in the 90s, and it's like always was fascinated with the cover, and, and I have some of their music. Uh, previous to this and always liked it. It's sort of like a surf garage type uh, One of the revival bands. I don't know how else to describe it. Zombie Go Go Records So yeah, that that was cool. Let's see some of the Song titles on this one um, 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 Hotline land of the land of the one for centers adventures through inner space so that's some good stuff too if you like that uh like surf instrumental type stuff this one was awesome too to find i vaguely seems like i'd vaguely seen this somewhere probably online shots in the dark it's a bob keen production and I don't know if this is, I think this is a soundtrack to a movie, because that is Rose McGowan. Uh, and Rose McGowan, I'm looking at her now on the poster on my wall uh, from the Planet Terror poster. Um, she was also in Charmed. Uh, I really like her as an actress. I think she's awesome. And in Planet Terror, if you haven't seen that movie, you really need to see it. If you like B-movies or exploitation movies, uh, grindhouse, you really have to see it. But anyway, we're talking about this. This has 20 tracks on it. And that's her again on the back. So I think this is a movie, like I said, I'm going to have to check it out to see. Because I think I did a search on uh, Amazon Prime Video or whatever it was. And it seems like this had came up on the search. A lot of her movies had came up on the search. And it's like, wow, what's that? But uh, some, some of the artists on here, I'll read a few of these. I don't want this video to go too long. Although my last video was quite rushed because my uh, camera kept crashing. So I try to make up for this one a little bit. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, the Peter Gunn theme. Uh, Baby Elephant Walk. Pink Panther theme. Um, and these are cover songs. Moon River. Let's see, you have um, The Wonder Mints, The Tiki Tones, Whiskey Biscuit, Manor Astro Man, uh, Insect Surfers, Dave Allen and the Arrows. Some really cool stuff on there. This came out in... Um, there's a 
there's no year on this. But anyway, a shot in the dark. Really cool. Uh, also, recently I picked up these at... We have a new Goodwill, a brand new Goodwill right down the road. And, um, of course, I've already been there like three times. Uh, and I found these, Rockabye Baby, Lullaby Renditions of the Ramones. Uh, and this was still in the plastic, still sealed when I bought it. So, it's like, wow, man. Because I don't have any of these. I mean, I think I have... Uh, I think I have the uh, one or two. I mean, I don't know how many they released, but there's that one and then this one too. This is Led Zeppelin, the lullaby renditions of Led Zeppelin. Also was still sealed. They had two more there uh, that I would have got, but... But there was no CD in those. One was uh, Lullaby the Beatles, and one was Green Day Lullaby from the same artist. It's like, I don't understand why when they put records or um, CDs out on the shelf at thrift stores, they don't check to see if it's got anything in it. I mean, if it doesn't have the right CD, I could understand that more so, even though that's still not accurate but no cd because they tell you when you get up to the um uh when you get up to the counter did you check these make sure it's the right cd make sure they're in there and it's not scratched or this or that well yeah so but but they don't check them when they put them on the shelf so i guess that's why we're supposed to check them whatever uh the best of clarence carter features stroking Stroking. This was also at uh, Goodwill. It also has Slip Away on here, which is a great song. I'm not real familiar with his other stuff, so I thought I'd pick this up. And just to listen to some more. And then this one I found at uh, Half Price Books the other day. I've been wanting this one. Iron Maiden Live After Death. This is the deluxe two-disc version, which is the one I'd wanted. I have the original one-disc version that I'd got years ago. But this one has all the extra tracks for some reason. I think the, the album reissue, the vinyl, I think has all the extra tracks on it. The second disc, the first disc is, it has uh, 13 tracks. And then the second disc has five more tracks. Uh, and then it also has a special multimedia section with uh, music videos and so on, but Live After Death is one of their one of their best albums, and it's a great live album. How could it not be? It's Iron Maiden. And then this one, a brand new release, just came out, uh, and I had to get it. Um, I don't know how many years ago it's been now, but uh, when James Durbin was on American Idol. I voted and voted and voted for him. I really wanted him to win. I want to say he came in second or fourth or sixth or something. He didn't win, basically. Uh, uh, but I went that year and seen the Idols tour with him, and it was it was awesome. Um, I've bought his solo albums and stuff. Not all of them, but I have bought his solo albums and everything. But now he's the lead singer in Quiet Riot. And they put this live album out. It's a live CD and DVD. It's called One Night in Milan. Uh, and Frankie Vanelli is the drummer. He's the original guy that's that's doing, keeping uh, Quiet Riot alive, you might say. There he is with his tongue out. And there's James Durbin beside him. The other two guys, I'm not sure who they are right off. I should know that though, shouldn't I? I should know everything before I start, start these videos. Or short these videos, but I watched this and it's it's really good. I mean, and it's funny because I'd never realized it before, but James Durbin sort of has that Kevin DeBro sound in his uh, voice when he does those songs. It's a lot more noticeable, and they do all the hits on here, and they do some new stuff because they have a new um, 
studio album out with James Durbin that came out right before this, and he talks about that on the album. Um, they do uh, Run For Cover, Slick Black, Cadillac, Mama We're All Crazy Now, um, Party All Night, The Wild and the Young, Come On Feel the Noise, Metal Health Bang Your Head, of course. They have to do those. So yeah, that's a great release. If anybody's curious about that or likes James Durbin, Quiet Riot, I really suggest you pick it up. All right, that's all the CDs. Now I'm on to some some vinyl, or some albums, rather, if I can stand it long enough. Keith Green, I only want to see you there. Uh, it's a gospel artist. I have one other one of his. This is on Sparrow Records. The other one I have, he's holding a sheep around his neck which I thought was awesome. This looks like it's done with the same artist, or same painting artist, painter, whatever. Uh, this one's called Fajardo. I'm not sure what language that is. Maybe if I show it, people can figure it out. Um, it's It looks like Spanish, but I don't know. I thought it said two ninety nine there on the back. I was like, "What? How did I pay two ninety nine for this?" This is an awesome label. Look at that. That's really cool. I mean, a lot of these records, you know, I'm just as fascinated with the the aesthetic of it, the cover, of course, and then the labels. A lot of times are really awesome. The Green Hornet. What well, just says the horn meets the hornet, green hornet theme. Al Hurt, let's see who that is, the green hornet. And I'd seen this record once before, or probably a couple times before, and I don't think I'd ever picked it up for some reason. RCA, that's a brand new record. It's got the King Kong theme, Tarzan theme from the monkeys, uh, the Get Smart theme. That would be really awesome. I like Al Hurt. I think his uh, music is really underrated. I mean, I know it's passe at this point because there's not a lot of people that listen to. I don't know if you call that easy listening, I imagine. Uh, this is Alan with the Elvis Presley story. I looked this guy up on uh, YouTube, and there's actual videos of him on there performing because I thought Alan was sort of a generic... I was going to say I'll never find anything by that, but you put Alan Tribute to Elvis, sure enough, it's on there. Um, and he does, you know, the, the standard Elvis songs. I haven't listened to that one yet, but it smells very musty. This one was really strange. Meditation Moods by the Roske Crucian Recordings, I guess. Great cover. Got the Buddha there and the Lotus. I'm assuming that's what that is. So that's four ninety nine or four ninety five here on the back, but I paid ninety nine cents, so no argument there. And I'm assuming this is like a meditation type record, but that's a great label too. And you know that that also helps me buy the record. If it has everything I want, it's it's weird. It's it's something I've never heard. Covers strange. The label's cool. That's all it takes. This one is Helen and Billy Scott with Good Times. They're having a good time, you can tell. They don't have any alcohol, though, in their hands. Maybe they're already drunk. What do you think? There they are on the back. He's staring off into space thinking, um, where's the camera? Oh, it's right in front of you. It says, in our last album, we recorded we included the songs he requested most, often on our radio, television, and personal appearance shows. Okay. Me and Bobby McGee, Rose Garden, Mockingbird Hill, uh, Funny Face, Billy's Mule, How Great Thou Art. Let's see what this label looks like. It's Jewel. It's not a fantastic label. It's sort of... Uh, moving on, Walt Disney World Epcot Center. This is the official album, which I don't know how many unofficial albums there is. Uh, and it has, uh, has some fruit here on the back. Some 
Let me see that. I don't know what year this came out. It looks like it's from the 80s. From Disneyland, of course. This is fairly good record. Fairly good shape, I mean. It's got a little scratch there, but you can't really feel it. So I don't know, really. It's sort of uh, interesting to listen to that. Uh, Roger McDuff, Spread the Word. 788 is the price tag on there, but I got, got it for a good old 99 cent. This dude was on uh, TBN with his gray afro there. This one's still sealed. Should I open it? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and open it. My hands are getting really cold because I'm sitting in front of the heat, but you'd never know it. Okay, let's see here. Pay attention to what you're doing. You can do it. You can do it. I think I remember how to do this. Ta-da! Ouch. Paper cut. And the first time, boys and girls, this record's ever been out uh, into the open since it was... since it was made. There you have it. And it's not warped. It's shiny. There's a scratch on there already. How'd that happen? Probably because it's like, what, 40 years old or something? Let's see if it has a date on it. It's funny that it would have a scratch. I mean, that's sort of strange. Uh, no date, of course. None of these ever have dates on them. Especially when I look for the date. There's never a date, but there you have it. Opened on live TV. We're not on TV, but we are live. Tom Howard, View from the Bridge. Uh, it's a Larry Norman Presents. And this, look at this logo down here. It's got like a screaming mouth with uh, crosses in it. And it's on, I don't know what label that is, SRJ. Solid Rock Records, that's it. So that's not a J, I guess. But anyway, now let's see here. I think it's a gatefold. It is. It looked interesting. So that's all it takes for me to get a record is, you know, it looks interesting. And it has this... Uh, it says scrapbook here on the other side. It's like it's like one sheet. It's like two sheets. Scrapbook. Recorded the summer of 1976 in Hollywood, California. There's that logo again. Story of Solid Rock. Which I guess is the... Uh, The, the album must be a concept album, I'm guessing, is what it sort of looks like. And Larry Norman was a gospel singer, too. Uh, I think he did... Uh, I could be wrong, but I think he was the one that used to be in Kansas that, that was a born-again Christian or something. I don't remember for sure if I'm right. But The Sweet Comfort Band. This was at... It says it was at half price books at one time for 50 cents but I don't think that's where I got it because it has a $1.99 sticker back here and I don't remember paying a $1.99 either I think it was at in the clearance at uh, half price books that's a pretty cool label Sweet Comfort Band I've got several from this artist uh, there's the lyrics on that side just the logo and the lyrics. That'd be a good name for a band. Logo and lyrics. This next record, uh, Cat bought for me. We were at the Antique Mall a while back. Two Sisters. I'd never seen this, and I thought, wow, that's crazy. Uh, will you buy that for me? Please, please, please. I probably did say that. It's on Sugar Scoop Records. It's dusty as all get out. Sugar Scoop. It's a great label. 
great uh, record label. Got to show the back. It just says, uh, side one has uh, B-Boys Beware Club Mix. Uh, scratch this, pop and lock, that's rock to the top. High Noon Remix, Destiny's Club Mix on side two right there. Hot Hot Sound and B-Boys B-Dubbed. So that ought to be great. I'm sure it's hip-hop, or they're attempting to hip-hop. It was a dollar record, the antique mall. Last one I got here, uh, Henry Rene and his orchestra, Compulsion to Swing. Hope that says yes. Pretty cool right there. Awesome cover. Some of the retro cocktail hour stuff I love. By the way, that's a real show, and if you haven't checked it out, you really should. It's on Kansas Public Radio. Uh, that's all I have in this video. Thanks for watching and subscribing. As I drink my cold coffee probably back there, I should have had it in my hand this whole time. But we'll see you in the next final update. Coming up real soon, you know.